Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming out. We do have a lot on our plate today uh, as we manage the beginning of a special session, the public health emergency, a tropical storm, and uh, some protests and demonstrations that, thank goodness, thus far have been almost exclusively uh, lawful and, and peaceful and nonviolent and so forth. Um, I have with me today Dr. Alex B.U. is normal. Colonel Wascom was supposed to be here from GOSEP uh, in case there were questions about Tropical Storm Cristobal and, and so forth. Uh, he may or may not make it up. He's testifying downstairs in the Senate Finance Committee. And then I have Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser who will make some comments at the end of my briefing. <clears throat> Since my last briefing, uh, the this tropical disturbance at the time, I guess it was, uh, that we were watching is actually developed into Tropical Storm Cristobal. You see it there, and it looks like it has its sights set on Louisiana. Uh, and uh, all of the modeling uh, seems to agree, uh, as of right now anyway. This morning I received a briefing from the National Weather Service. Obviously it is still too early to know exactly uh, where that storm is going to go and exactly when it will arrive and when it arrives, what it will be packing. But what we anticipate uh, is that it's going to be a very severe uh, weather event uh, for Louisiana. Uh, and this will be compounded by the fact that between now and then, unrelated to Cristobal, we're going to have very uh, substantial uh, rainfall from afternoon thunderstorms. So the ground will be sat saturated before it arrives. Um, we're looking at uh, sometime on Sunday or Monday for the arrival of the tropical storm. Um, most models uh, have it uh, centered on the central coastline of Louisiana, somewhere in the Atchafalaya uh, River Vermilion Bay area. And what that leaves is southeast Louisiana, including Baton Rouge and New Orleans, on the east side of the storm, which typically receives the, the heaviest rain. And of course, it could shift uh, east or west, uh, making some changes uh, in that. Um, I, I don't want anybody to focus too much on the specific track, but rather the cone, because that cone clearly shows you that everything in Louisiana um, will likely be impacted. Obviously, the further south, the more the impact that you can expect. The most reasonable worst case scenario that we've been told by the National Weather Service is to expect 10 to 15 inches of rain on the east side of the storm. That's gonna fall over a 48 hour period. That's a lot of rain. That's especially a lot of rain if it's falling on ground that's already saturated from several days worth of tropical storms. Further west uh, could be eight to 10 inches uh, of rain. Uh, and, and literally, it just sorts of depends on, on exactly where the center of the storm is. But 8 to 10 inches could be what you see in, in uh, Baton Rouge, or it may actually be further west and, and, and so forth. Uh, we should know more, obviously, before the storm makes landfall. I do uh, want everybody to notice that the National Weather Service has already issued flash flood warnings. Um, through Tuesday of next week um, in some areas of Louisiana. Part of the good news is river levels are much lower than they were last year when we had uh, the, the hurricane. Uh, and so there's more capacity for rainfall uh, to be taken into those rivers before you have uh, substantial flooding activity. Um, and certainly we don't have any threat to levee overtopping or anything like that along the Mississippi River. One of the challenges we're going to face uh, will be with wind. Typically, you don't think of tropical storms uh, producing enough wind to have heavy damage. But when you have saturated ground, uh, it doesn't take as much wind uh, in order to cause real problems with trees and utility poles and things like that. Uh, so so the, the wind that we expect uh, could be 60 miles an hour or so. And obviously, this could get refined as we move forward. Uh, obviously. Uh, Storm surge along the coast uh, is one of those things that we're looking at uh, very hard and preparing for. Um, we are tracking 678 gates in the coastal zone. 
157 of those are currently closed. Every gate in, in the flood control uh, structures in, in the state of Louisiana across the coastal zone have been exercised uh, with respect to their operation criteria as part of our preparation for hurricane season. Everyone should be following the news and the weather updates from their local officials. Now is the time to prepare. Uh, put yourself and your family in the best possible position uh, to uh, ride out the first 72 hours of this storm um, and make sure that you get a game plan. You can go to getagameplan.org. Uh, uh, it, is, it is obviously not too late to do that. It's really important that you do. And it's also important that you take notice of the differences between preparing for um, a natural disaster when we have the public health emergency for COVID-19 because there are some differences. Uh, and obviously there are a lot of similarities too. So make sure that you're stocked with essential supplies like batteries, water, cell phone chargers, necessary prescriptions, masks, uh, or other facial coverings, hand sanitizer. Um, the mitigation measures that we have in place remain critically important and should be taken into account as you make your hur hurricane preparations. Um, and we transitioned to phase two on Friday, just ahead of Cristobal's arrival. Have a plan if you're instructed to evacuate. Uh, if you have pets, have a plan for sheltering them as well. Uh, and make sure you're staying informed through the weather uh, and emergency alerts, uh, local media, paying attention to the National Weather Service, local forecasts, but also local elected officials uh, as well uh, in the, as the offices of emergency preparedness around the state of Louisiana. Um, Part of getting a game plan is pre-registering for disaster SNAP. Now I'm not announcing that we have this disaster SNAP available, but you can pre-register. Uh, and if we have a disaster and DSNAP is authorized by the federal government, if you're pre-registered, it's that much faster for you to receive uh, those benefits. If you have already pre-registered for DSNAP, uh, you're gonna need to register again because we have a new vendor. Uh, now, if you're receiving SNAP, you don't need to do this. But if you are not receiving SNAP and you want to pre-register for DSNAP, you, you need uh, to do that even if you've already pre-registered before. Um, there's, it, and it may not be a vendor that changed. It may be new technology uh, that has been upgraded uh, that's causing that. Uh, you can register for DSNAP or get more information at dcfs.la.gov slash dsnap. That is dcfs.la.gov slash dsnap. Now, let's transition to today's COVID-19 briefing. We are reporting today 387 new cases for a total of 41,133 since the inception of the public health emergency. There are 35 new reported deaths today, which bring that total to 2,759, sadly. Um, we have 617 COVID-19 patients uh, who are hospitalized across the state of Louisiana. That is the lowest number since about March the 22nd. 86 of these patients are on ventilators. Uh, so those numbers are certainly trending in the right direction. In the aggregate, we have tested 402,087 individuals for COVID-19. 4.3% of the tests from today were positive. And if you look at all tests that have been administered, we're at 10.2%. Uh, we've told you before that you really want to get below 10%, we're certainly tracking in that direction. Early on, uh, our average uh, positivity rate was 30 to 40%. Uh, it hasn't been above 10% in about three weeks. Uh, and we've been averaging closer to 5% uh, lately. And so we're getting that number down where we would like uh, for it to be. As we prepare to move into phase two on Friday, uh, please anticipate the impact of the tropical storm and continue to deal with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, and I know that with all of this coming at once, uh, with other things that are happening as well, 
Uh, there may be a tendency to feel overwhelmed. That is understandable. Please know that there is help uh, and that there is hope. Uh, ConquerCOVID19.LA, uh, that's ConquerCOVID19.LA, is a comprehensive website with resources and tips to help anyone stay calm and reduce stress. This is for children and families, first responders, healthcare professionals, business leaders. You can obviously also call the COVID hotline to speak with trained and compassionate counselors at 1-866-310-7977. So I'm gonna yield the podium now to the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, he's got some prepared remarks. I'm gonna ask that if you have questions for the Lieutenant Governor that you ask them uh, while he's at the podium. And then I will come back when he uh, completes uh, his portion and, and take questions from you as well. And obviously, Dr. BU is here to take questions related to testing and cases and so forth. Billy? Thank you, Governor. And, uh, Governor, I want to thank you and your team and uh, all the Reliance Committee and Task Force members for their efforts in getting us to phase two, where we finally can welcome visitors back to Louisiana and most importantly, uh, Louisianans for following the rules and uh, helping us see the numbers continue to decline. Uh, this Friday, we will open all of our welcome centers to visitors uh, coming back to Louisiana. We will limit uh, the lobbies to 10 people at a time. Uh, we've got a plan to continue to clean those facilities many times a day. All of our staff will be taking all the measures wearing masks. Uh, we will also be giving out uh, Louisiana Feed Your Soul masks to all visitors and ask them too uh, to follow the rules here in Louisiana so we can continue to see those numbers uh, decline. I want to thank Sean Wilson with DOTD who will be putting some uh, mobile signs at the state line, welcoming our visitors back and letting them know the welcome centers are back open. We also will be extending our promotion at the state parks, the th if you book three nights, the fourth night free uh, to our guests coming in from outside Louisiana uh, with the code welcome back uh, to get that fourth night free. And uh, we're excited about that. Louisianans over the last several weeks safely uh, really supported the museums and the state parks as we had asked them to do. The last two weekends, we saw over 20,000 visitors to our state parks. That hasn't happened since 2008. Incredible numbers uh, and, uh, and everyone did it in a safe manner. So we're really proud of that. As we continue to monitor Travel USA, uh, the numbers are pretty consistent that 82% of travelers are gonna stay close to home within a drive market. So we're gonna ask Louisiana to continue to support staycation, take a Louisiana road trip. Uh, you won't be disappointed uh, as we venture out and market Louisiana across the state lines as well. We have also rolled out the Louisiana Land Yap Plan where we are offering conventions and conferences that are looking to relocate next year or later this year, an opportunity uh, to look at Louisiana and we'll give them Louisiana seafood prepared by a Louisiana chef and we'll also give them a Louisiana banner musician. Uh, we just landed a national uh, trucking conference to Lake Charles, and we were able to change their mind. They were going to Miami. So all of our tourism folks around the state are leaning forward to fill our calendar next year, and we're real excited about that. So uh, I want to thank you again, Governor, your team. We're really excited about phase two, but we ask everyone to do it in a safe manner so we can quickly move to phase three. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, in terms of the conventions and conferences, are you, what kind of requirements are on those conventions if they're coming to the state? Or when you're offering um, the seafood and the musician and all that to try and entice people here, are you also adding that they're gonna have a bunch of restrictions to follow? Well, most of them are, the end of this year, early next year. We haven't had any large groups. We've had some uh, groups of 10 and 20 that have rescheduled to come uh, the end of this summer. 
but we haven't had any large groups that really, most of the conventions and, and groups are polling their members to see if they feel, one, if they feel safe traveling, and two, can they get the flights to where they want to go. So most of them, uh, the trucking convention is next year. Um, all the other events, a lot of sport events that we're talking to for many of the ball fields around the state are the end of this year and early next year. And hopefully, we pray that we will be through the three phases and back operating pretty much to what we'll call the new normal. Yes, sir. Grand Isle. Grand Isle had, I think, over 2,000 people. Uh, incredible uh, turnout down on the island. Yeah. Well, we had a, a great week. I tell you, the, the Louisiana people really responded to that special and booked every cabin campsite that we had available. Is that helping with, I know you, uh, y'all were losing revenue because obviously everything was shut down. How does that address some of the revenue shortfalls y'all have? It's absolutely going to help. We've booked about a $3.2 million loss up to this point. But those revenues will absolutely help in going forward with what the trends look like in travel. RV sales are up 150%. Individual bike sales are up over 100%. People are going to uh, AVT. Everybody's looking to do outside travel. So we're going to continue to push people to travel to the state parks. And hopefully they'll get out in those local communities and shop and eat in a local restaurant. So we see that as a trend for the next year. So we're going to take advantage of it. Yes, sir. You mentioned the trucking convention in Lake Charles. Um, any other big ones maybe in the capital city that have already uh, planned to come back or um, come here from where they're planning to go somewhere else? Yeah, Paul Arrigo's working on about nine right now. Uh, they don't want us giving out the names in case it doesn't happen or someone don't get back and try to redirect that. But uh, the way the trucking, when they polled their members, and said, hey, we got to offer to change the convention to Louisiana. We get seafood, a jazz band, and uh, what do you think? And 80% of the people said, let's go to Louisiana. So it's kind of a great enticement. Nobody can offer the great Louisiana seafood music. So we're going to continue that, and hopefully uh, later this year we'll have the calendar filled for Louisiana, and we'll bounce back a lot quicker than other states. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Lieutenant Governor, I appreciate your, your work. And, and I'll tell you, he has spent a lot of time at GOSEP over the last several months. And just about all of our White House Coronavirus Task Force calls, he's been there. Uh, we actually had, did have a, another call today uh, just before I came over to the Capitol about an hour ago. Uh, and. Uh, I can tell you that the, the people in Washington have taken notice of the folks in Louisiana and the progress we've made on this public health emergency. And to tie it together um, with respect to Louisiana seafood and, and our parks, I wasn't one of those people that was able to get to Grand Isle. But I was a beneficiary because I had a really good friend who went to Grand Isle this past weekend. Uh, and he did some good on yellowfin tuna and brought me some. And I've been eating it every day. Uh, uh, since then, and it's been absolutely delicious. So I know what you're talking about when you say people want to come to Louisiana uh, in order to enjoy our seafood. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a few questions uh, from you all. Uh, remember, I have Dr. B here if you've got questions about certain things related to testing. Yes, sir. Governor, have you made any decisions about whether you're going to sign or veto both the tort reform bill and the bill that would uh, change how you allocate CARES Act money to local governments? No. And um, we, we are still looking at the bills. I will have my first meeting with my staff later this afternoon to start the, the bill review. Uh, we have some time. We're, we're looking at them. I'm not prepared to, to guess one way or another, and I certainly haven't made a decision. Um, it's, uh, it's apparent that the bill that uh, Senator Talbot authored uh, managed to make absolutely nobody happy which is sometimes the sign of a really good compromise, but I don't think that's what the issue is here. So but we're gonna take a, a good look at it and, and, um, and we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we can. Yes, sir. Governor, you mentioned at the beginning of the press conference all of the things going on right now between protests
protests and yeah. demonstrations and the pandemic. With a hurricane in the Gulf, can Louisianans handle more trauma? Yeah, well, we can because we're tough and resilient people. Now, there's not a hurricane in the, uh, in the Gulf. Uh, and there's not a, f a forecast that, that shows that it could be a hurricane uh, when it makes landfall, uh, uh, although I guess you can never rule out that a tropical storm could just inch over uh, the strength necessary to become a Category 1 hurricane. But that's not what we're expecting right now. But, but I will tell you, I'm, uh, I had an opportunity yesterday to speak to well over 1,000 pastors from all over Louisiana of every denomination and one of the things I asked them yesterday was to make sure that they they are praying for our state and for our people because these are tough times um, you know we we had a flourishing uh, economy one that that uh, was one of the fastest growing in the country and producing uh, revenue about 10 percent ahead of the forecast and then this public health emergency hit uh, and all of a sudden the economy is in trouble uh, people are not working. Uh, people who own businesses have seen their businesses uh, decline and so forth. On top of all that, you've got the public health side of this, uh, where we've had, uh, as you saw from from the uh, from the slide, uh, we we've had uh, almost 3,000 people now die and 41,000 test positive. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's a lot more COVID out there than that because somewhere between 25 and 40 percent of all cases are asymptomatic and and largely untested. And then, you know, you just start adding all that together, and then you get to the the uh, the very unfortunate, uh, unnecessary, uh, and illegal killing of Mr. George Floyd and and the protests that have happened. But I, I will want to I do want to pause here and thank the people of Louisiana because. Almost without exception, uh, every single person who's shown up to protest and to demonstrate have done so in a way uh, that is um, an appropriate expression of, of their uh, concerns about this, and, and they're doing it in a way that's exercising the First Amendment rights in, in a way that's, that's uh, uh, peaceful and, and nonviolent. And, and I happen to think that as a result, their voices are actually being heard. Uh, better and so I appreciate that, but you, you do have that going on, and now you've got the tropical uh, storm Cristobal that that uh, is is uh, approaching uh, Louisiana. Uh, probably will make landfall Sunday uh, and and visit a lot of rain on us. But the people of Louisiana, in the short answer to your question, are very tough and resilient people. Uh, so it's not that I don't worry uh, about them. I do, but I just I just know, and I'm always amazed at, at how good and decent, hardworking and, and faithful our, our people are. And so I just believe we're, we're going to be fine, but we are taking nothing for granted. We are working extremely hard to be prepared. We're working with every single region and parish in the state. Uh, we have FEMA embedded with us. Uh, we knew that as we went into hurricane season, we were doing so uh, under a public health emergency. So we already have contingencies in place to, as to how you uh, evacuate if you need to, how you do search and rescue if you need to, how do you shelter, how do you distribute commodities, all of these sorts of things. And I can't tell you it's all going to be absolutely perfect. I can only tell you our, our uh, folks uh, led by Colonel Wascom and GOSEP have been working extremely hard. And so um, I do invite people to pray, however, if I haven't done that yet, um, uh, that, that we can pray for our people and for our state uh, in times like this. I, I think prayer is awesome. Leo? Uh, the National Hurricane Center says a bracket at this time and it could be 24 hours earlier than what we just saw in the screen. Yeah. So it could be a year Saturday. Uh, is there, um, it could hit somewhere between uh, Morgan City and Lafayette. Is there a plan in place to call for evacuation if we need it if it turns out to be? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always a plan to, to call for one because we have that contingency. We know how to do it. We know what areas, depending upon what the threat is in terms of certain rivers or, or storm surge. You have inundation maps. All of this will be refined as, as we move forward. Um, right now, I'm not announcing uh, an evacuation. Uh, and uh, I, I will tell you, the National Weather Service uh, told us earlier today, just before I came over, that Saturday night, they believe, is the earliest that it could possibly hit. It's more likely Sunday 
Uh, and then, but when it hits, we know that there's going to be 40, and this is assuming that we don't have some weather system developed that sort of holds it in place, because when, when you get hit by a storm, you just want it to keep moving. Um, but we will get at least 48 hours of very, very heavy rain out of it, possibly more if it, if it slows down and stalls and just keeps dumping rain on, on the state of Louisiana. So everyone uh, should be cognizant of this. Uh, most people in Louisiana don't have to remember too far back. Um, it was the spring and then August of 2016 uh, when we, we had uh, just tremendous flooding across a, a huge part of our state. So um, we're encouraging everybody to take this very serious, uh, be as, as ready as they can be for it. Um, Yeah, um, but what we know is is the the uh, rivers, the Chafalaya River itself and the Mississippi River, are a few feet lower than they were. And I say a few; I think it may be two, uh, lower than it was last year when the when the hurricane hit. And so that we know there's more capacity um, uh, for for rainfall. Yes, ma'am. Um, in terms of sheltering, if that's needed. What sort of plans have y'all developed for sheltering in light of COVID? Obviously, it seems like the mega shelter might not be the best situation. Yeah. Well, first of all, we, we do have plans that involve mega shelters as an option. Uh, and we have uh, pre-positioned there some, some tents within the shelters so that people can have um, uh, uh, an area in the shelter that is sort of self-contained if that if that's necessary and we pre-position those at our large shelters around the state um, your point is well taken it's not the optimal time to do congregate shelters because people may come into the shelter with COVID-19 and so many weeks ago uh, GOSEP uh, led by Colonel Wascom who just came in started working uh, through FEMA uh, to get early approval um, for sheltering that would, we would typically uh, put into uh, these large congregate shelters, uh, put more of those individuals and families in hotels and motel rooms, uh, which happen to be available uh, right now because of the public health emergency. You don't have a lot of those, well, I should say you have a lot of vacancies and so forth. And so we, we, we have that option. The other, another challenge we have is, quite frankly, uh, the American Red Cross volunteers aren't going to be uh, available to us as they normally are because many of those volunteers are in that vulnerable age category uh, with respect to COVID-19. Uh, and then the, the last real hurdle that we have is we typically have reciprocal agreements uh, with other states to shelter some portion of our population if we, and I'm not talking about all of this as it relates to this weekend, but, but we have a, a long hurricane season coming up where if we have to evacuate um, a, a large segment of our population, other states will take those in, the individuals in. Well, we're still working through that because in a public health emergency, as you can imagine, just like we don't want to do congregate setting, uh, congregate sheltering here, uh, they don't want to do congregate sheltering of our people in their states either. Uh, and so we're, we're having to work through uh, all of that. Uh, and, and we're making good progress. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, as it relates to this weekend, we are not announcing any evacuations. We're not announcing any any shelters. But if that becomes necessary, we, we certainly will. Jim, did you have anything you want to add to that? No, sir. I think you covered. I was just remarking to Christina, you could you could work be a great FEMA administrator. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but no, thank you. Governor, <laughs> Governor I think on Monday you were, uh, about the protest, you you mentioned you were working with the federal government uh, as far as the preparations for these protests. Can you talk more about what agencies you're working with, what exactly the federal government is telling you when preparing for these protests? Well, I, I can't tell you exactly what they're telling me because the information that we get uh, is, 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 and that's primarily the assistance that we're talking about, is the sharing of information. Uh, and so we have federal partners in law enforcement uh, who will share information with the state police, with, with local uh, chiefs of police and sheriff's offices and that sort of thing if they have specific credible uh, information that indicates that there, there could be a problem associated with a particular protest or demonstration, uh, what to look for and that sort of thing. Quite frankly, we haven't had very much of that uh, in Louisiana. And so with the information we've been getting 
uh, from our federal partners here in Louisiana has been very generic in nature, uh, things that they're seeing in other states that we, we might want to be uh, prepared for. Uh, but that's really the, the type of, of assistance and, and that, that I was referring to. Do you expect to mobilize the National Guard in response to protests here? I, you know, I don't expect to. Um, obviously, that, that remains an option for me as it is for other governors. Uh, what I expect is that we will continue to see uh, peaceful, nonviolent uh, demonstrations and protests uh, where people properly exercise their First Amendment rights. Um, that's what we have seen in Louisiana up today and uh, up to today, and I don't expect that that's going to change. Um, and uh, I will tell you, our, our law enforcement is doing a really good job of working with the individuals who are organizing the protests and demonstrations and the individuals who are showing up. Uh, and uh, you, you see, I think, a lot more dialogue happening uh, and, and so forth. And it's not it's not the really uh, raw, contentious nature that you sometimes see. And I'm not saying there isn't some of that uh, in Louisiana with respect to these demonstrations and protests, but, but, but we're seeing less of that and a lot more dialogue and communication, which I actually think is, is helpful. Yes, sir. Obviously, a lot of immediate things taking precedent. I kind of want to go back to uh, the tourism aspect that uh, okay. Lieutenant Governor Nunges brought, just because it is such a huge part of the state's economy and it's taken a hit over the past several months. Um, is there any fear or um, cautiousness that it may be hard to persuade people to, you know, start coming back here? Is it going to be harder than yeah. other states who weren't hit as hard as COVID and kind of getting back to where eventually where the state was pre-COVID? Well, first of all, I absolutely believe we're going to get back uh, to where we were before COVID. Um, and I say that because Louisiana is so special, so unique. Uh, in the United States of America that this is where people want to be. And as soon as they feel safe coming, they're going to come back. Uh, and with the, the things that we're seeing out of the business community, the faith community, individuals, the uh, local elected officials around the state of Louisiana, I just believe people are going to feel safe coming back. Um, don't know exactly when that's going to be. We are going to have a new normal for some period of time. Um, but, you know, you all can remember in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and there were people saying, oh, New Orleans is never coming back. Louisiana's just uh, been decimated and, and, and there's, there's no return from that. Uh, our people are much more resilient than that. And our state is more special and more unique. And, um, and so I always believe we're going to come back and I think it'll happen sooner. And, and, uh, and bigger than, than other people think. But I also know that it's going to be conditioned upon several things that we're just not in control of. When is that vaccination available? Uh, and what does the virus do between now and then? And anybody who tells you they know, um, they're guessing. And I, I, don't, I don't want to guess about when it's going to happen, but I will absolutely tell you that it's going to happen. And it's going to, it's going to it, Louisiana will be back. Maybe? Yes, sir. And some eviction court proceedings can resume fairly soon under phase two. Is, does the state have a plan to extend any deadlines or provide any state assistance to avoid an evictions crisis when things begin to ease up? Yeah, well, we are working on that. And, and as you will recall, uh, we suspended evictions, but, but we didn't suspend, and you can't suspend uh, the obligation to pay rent. Um, and I know the hardship many people have endured and that they faced and, and uh, they don't have the funds available to them that they would normally have. I do encourage all of these individuals to work with their landlords um, to try to work through that and come up with a plan uh, to catch up and, and so forth. Um, we are working right now in my office um, with the Office of Community Development, Louisiana Housing Corporation, the Division of Administration and the governor's office to try to identify funding that we could uh, make available for a renter's assistance program. Uh, I think it's important that, that we do that. Uh, I don't have an announcement uh, for you uh, at this moment, but it is something that, that we are uh, looking at. And, and as you know from legislation that, uh, that just recently uh, moved through the, the regular session, uh, the CARES Act money is largely spoken for and so we're 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 looking uh, at other funding that we may have available but we're also looking at measures that congress uh is still considering 
because I do believe that there's at least one more piece of legislation that will move through Congress that will make uh, funding available to states and local governments. And we have to see how much and what the strings are and what the um, intended purpose for those funds are to see um, if we might be able to use them. But I can tell you we are actively working uh, on this issue. Um, it's not as easy for a state like Louisiana that was so adversely impacted by the public health um, emergency or ha has been as, as other states that were less impacted um, because the, the formula allocated money, um, uh, you know, primarily based on, on uh, population. And so you have some, some states out there that didn't have anywhere near our uh, per capita cases. They didn't have our expenditures and they, they haven't had the economic uh, consequences that, that we have had, but yet they may have gotten as much or more uh, funding. And so it's a little bit more challenging here in Louisiana, but we do understand the, the, uh, the importance of such a program and we're trying to find out whether we can stand one up. And we're gonna obviously work with the legislature uh, in that regard as well. So I want to thank you again for coming out. Um, I'm going to ask you to do what you can to keep the citizenry informed between now uh, and when Cristobal uh, makes landfall so that everybody knows what to expect. Uh, they're not surprised uh, and that uh, they have done their very best to prepare uh, for the arrival uh, of this tropical storm. Uh, we will be speaking to you all again uh, on Friday at 2.30, uh, and so we should have the, uh, an updated forecast at that time uh, and, and the other information to share with you all uh, on the day that we go to uh, phase two. Um, and that was one of the things that the vice president remarked on today uh, during, during the call, uh, was that he, he pointed out the fact that Louisiana would be going to phase two and, and how broadly uh, that had been applied across uh, the state of Louisiana in terms of the various uh, types of businesses and, and entities who, who are impacted. Um, and and uh, he asked me again uh, yesterday in a phone call to express uh, to the people of Louisiana his appreciation and the president's appreciation uh, for the work that's been done here to flatten the curve uh, and to, to really make a, a positive difference on the trajectory. Uh, as it relates to COVID-19 and hospitalizations, uh, because as you know, a, a little over two months ago, we were headed in a very, very uh, bad direction. So thank you all, I'll see you in two days.